how to practice screaming without any supervision. Do not practice for longer than three to four minutes at a time. After these three to four minutes, you will give it a little voice check. So you will go, all the way throughout your range, all the way up and all the way down. And you will talk around, yeah, yeah, just using my voice, and I'm raising my voice, yeah, yeah, yeah. To check if your voice still behaves normally, or if your vocal folds are swollen from abuse. If your voice sounds the same as it always sounds, behaves the same as it always behaves, and your voice feels great, you can give it another three to four minutes of practice, then you do another vocal check. And if your voice is still well, then you can practice for another three to four minutes and then you're gonna give it a break. A break for three to four hours and then you're gonna practice again. Again with the voice checks. Don't forget these, this is really important because that's how you can monitor whether what you are doing is hurting you. If what you are doing is hurting you, something like this can happen. So you go up into your head voice and it starts to break or there's just air coming out while it feels like you're vocalizing but there's nothing coming out. Um, do not confuse this with the normal break um, people usually have when they go from their chest voice to their head voice, right? That little crack in between, that is pretty much normal if you didn't practice this before. Don't freak out if you get this. Um, but if your voice is crackly up there and it's not working, this is an indicator for that um, your vocal folds are swollen and they don't close properly anymore. Another indicator is that when you talk around, your voice sounds hoarse or thin or breathy or it wants to crack, right? Especially when you raise your voice, it wants to crack. Then you know, okay, what I did was wrong. I abused my voice. Um, I was too loud or uh, was too tight or whatever, many ways to do it wrong. Then you're gonna rest. And on the next day, you're gonna check, is my voice back to normal? And then if so, you will continue practicing. If not, rest till your voice is back to normal. That's also why you shouldn't practice for too long because um, some things you can do very wrong if you have no supervision. So really become connected to how is my voice feeling, what feels good for my voice and not. If something feels good and it leaves no impact on your voice afterwards, then it's great Then go ahead and do it. If it does, you did it wrong, or what you were trying to do was not the thing you intended to do, or what you were trying to do does not work. Another fallacy you should not fall into, this, I cannot stress this enough, is thinking that when you do the exercise, it sounds different because you're a different singer, and you, when you sing it, all, of course sounds different because you have a different voice. With screaming techniques, this is not the case. When I sing, it's gonna sound different than when you sing. But when I do screaming exercises, um, something like uh, compressed voice, or um, doing a kargira, stuff like this, this should sound incredibly similar throughout all other male voices. So if you try to replicate something from someone that teaches you how to scream, it should sound incredibly similar, if not um, almost the exact same. And if it does not, then you're doing it wrong. It doesn't have anything to do with you doing a different voice, uh, with you having a different voice. But the mechanism you are supposed to do should create almost the exact same sound. So really cl closely monitor is what I'm doing exactly what the person showing me what to do is doing. If not, you are doing it either wrong and or differently. So good luck on your vocal journey.